Hunter x Hunter episode 127. Yeah, Miriam, don't underestimate the human race. Whatever that means, for good or for bad, just don't underestimate. I wonder how much damage you took from this. Call him by his full name. It's not exactly loving. Very fitting for Netero. This whole thing also very fitting for Hunter x Hunter. And for this arc. Of course, of course he did the whole time. Of course there was a backup gambit. There's always a backup gambit for anyone of any sufficient mastery. And Netero is the master. What was I thinking? After all I've seen, I haven't learned. <laughs> Netero would not go in there without something up his sleeve of his favorite t-shirt. Not that he needs sleeves anymore. Netero wore his favorite t-shirt <laughs> to, to detonate an atomic bomb. Netero came in with a bomb and went out with a bomb. Hostility X and X determination. Ooh, I get the very bad feeling that this arc is coming to a close and I don't like it. Oh, there was this whole hint about this was a place used for nuclear testing. Here we are. Netero told us this. Don't underestimate the power of human evolution. This is the fist of... what was his name? Rodrigo Hidalgo? They hit you. Alright, you're getting a little too close to home here, narrator. Trying to enjoy my shonen. Wow, really being explicit with this. Is this how Garbage City was formed? What does it mean that it's a rose, too? It's like the symbol of beauty. Bloom. <laughs> Alright, narrator. I'm pretty sure it did. This is, after all, a battle not between human and beast, but between human and human. In any way that really matters. It's like which element of humanity wins. I think the power of humanity is a really interesting way to phrase that. As I've alluded to, I think that has an ambiguous reading. It's not necessarily good. It's just powerful. Humanity, to use the, the show in the narrator's terms, is both human and ant. It's largely ant. That's just a reality, but it's also not the whole thing. Humans are also much more than ants. Netero's turn at the end there was really darkly framed. He's definitely using a destructive power. But my reading of his death is that it was a victory. Though I could sympathize with the argument that it was a loss, given how it was framed and the fact that he's using this terrible element of humanity, this sort of beast-like force of destruction, as it seems like the narrator is bringing to attention. I think what largely saves it is that Netero deliberately moved this fight to a bomb testing site so that there would be no casualties. I don't think it was beyond his comprehension that there's a similarity between the two or that there's evil in humans. In fact, it seems like Netero was fully willing to explore the evil in, in humans. What it seems like he was ultimately looking for and testing for was contributions, whether they be for good or for evil. He's looking for magnificence, for excellence, for things that push the boundaries, which, like I said last time, and to the the point of atomic bombs is one way to look at it. It's not really a heartwarming way to look at it. It's just a way to look at it. So I guess sort of soothe the pain and fear of the fact that there's such devastation devastating forces in the world, and that would be that if something is possible over a long enough time span, it will exist. You could spend a lot of energy wishing it were different. If only we had done this differently in history. There's nothing that really can be done about the fact that it exists now, except navigating that in the current moment. And things will happen, and it seems like it's one of two options. Given existence, either it's understood and adapted to, or we get annihilated. But I agree with Netero, don't underestimate the power of humanity. Oh, you two are in for a big surprise. There's the surprise. Surprise! That wasn't the king. That oh, is a clone. I'm so confused about what's the clone and what's not the clone. He's quite bug-like, becoming more ant. It's so hard for Knuckle in this series to just have a direct fight. What does this do to Poof? What does this do to Yuppie? That feels right. It's not that Poof can't change or see the light or become human. It's that he's unwilling to yet. Being highly intelligent, he's locked himself in his own thought box. There's no escape. It would take a lot. All things considered, it's going pretty well. Only been 30 minutes. It's the span of an episode. I did your job for you. I found Bob. I don't know. Pom changed her appearance so much before. I didn't even know she was 
こうして戻ってこられたんだからな。Okay, a lesser octopus would have been disappointed that he wasn't the one to find Palm, but his heart is pure. 最初の予定通り、俺が車でペイジンまで連れてくよ。いや。How would you imagine Palm leaving at this point? Yeah. 今すぐゴンのところへ行きたいの。でも、マッツは彼の意思を尊重して。<laughs> the answer in a weird way made Palm like a better human. Kimeta Tori no situation Nara. Psycho no performance or Hakis. Yosurne, or a touch in the Kirikotoa. I t no Jama or Shinaikoto. Demo Mushimo. Ah, so the demo I tga. The Taiti Kutini Tatara. I don't really know what to make of the decision fully. I sort of don't like it in principle that Gon just gets to have his way. But isolating for Kalua and his outlook, he has come a long way. Being able to separate a little bit, to let go of that sort of panicked sense of control and to trust Gon a little bit, or let him make his own decisions without feeling internally compromised by it. He's no match for her. Okay, yeah, I, I don't love it. I know I'm probably overlooking something, or maybe Akago has the wrong reading and is underestimating what they're planning on doing, but for me, way more satisfying option here is just to go in there and get going out. I mean, I know he's stubborn, I know he won't listen, but Pito has clearly later cards on the table, and what she cares about is getting Kamuki out safely. If you can get going out of the room, you've saved his life, and you saved your own. Granted, they don't have the full story, they don't have the full picture, they don't really understand that the ants are kind of changing, that we don't necessarily have to kill Pito. Gon certainly will never see that, but as his friend, I kind of don't need him to in the moment. I think Gon is being tyrannical and is not thinking clearly, and I don't like the idea of dying for that. Though simultaneously, I can't help but admire the dedication, the commitment they have to supporting him, that they can face this level of fate knowing the danger. The only thing that makes this somewhat palatable for me is if Kago's reading is wrong and Kalua actually is thinking, I'm gonna go in there, let go into his thing, and then I'm gonna save him. We're going to win. But like, I'm gonna die because going is stubborn. I don't know. You have to confirm the king's death at least. I think they're all still in. You'd shock. I'm saying Knuckle just determined to be in critical danger the entire mission in every way possible, much to my frustration and also joy. God, I bet Malir Malirian could use a cigarette right now. With all of them, do they stand a chance against Pito? I want to believe that they do. What, with APR? <laughs> Oh, this just came to a head. You're just at his whim. I think he just got impatient. Okay, well this is good news for Kamugi, right? Kamugi's stable? Oh, she looks great. You got carpet bombed by a dragon. This is not great. <laughs> this is very ant like of you, Gon. Oh no, she's gonna bumble her way right into her own death again. It's worse than that eagle. No softness. Kamugi doesn't need to understand right now. Wow. Wow. It's subtle, but I get it. Like, have you ever been emotionally destroyed by someone way weaker than you? People with a certain level of conviction, at least in a given moment, it just overrides your knowledge. It activates your deeper senses. I've seen this with dogs, too. Like, how giant, full-sized dogs will be paralyzed with fear from, like, chihuahuas just because of the raw energy and power behind their commitment to murder. Reason gives way to unreason. Going as that little dog that bit me in the kneecap when I was eight and traumatized me for life. Go! So it's... You don't need to ask Gon's permission. Gon wants his victories in a very particular way, instead of circumstances. You can trust him or to knuckle. That was my first instinct. It's really interesting and dark to see Gon stare at Kamugi with such hatred. He looks at her and just sees Kite, which is not fair. Oh, I didn't even think about that. But 
The reason I didn't think about it was is because Knuckle and Kalua wouldn't do that. But I guess Peter wouldn't know that. Peter. <laughs> That's the undoing of this plan, though. What I was saying about how the most unrelenting people, the most vicious, often overcome the reasonable. You push people far enough into a corner that way, they descend with you. They realize that with this non-existent amount of leverage, they're going to lose what they cherish anyway. And so they bear their fangs. At some point, if Peter feels like she's going to lose the king or Kamugi based on Gon's plan, she just gives up the plan and attacks Gon. Yeah. Well, oof, I don't know, actually. I don't know. I think that might be wishful thinking. Hard to say. I want to believe that's true. Maybe it's the one thing. You know, maybe that's the one thing that snaps going out of it. There's a fair bit of evidence from their history that suggests otherwise. This might be some cope here. That being said, I'm glad Kalua is not going. I'm glad Kalua is okay letting him go. I'm not fully convinced Kalua is like all the way there yet and in a great place. You track him. Please say something about how you wouldn't hurt her. Poor Kamugi. You're very important. He got bombed by a rose. This is the moment of truth. It had to have done some damage. How do you feel for Yuppie? How do you feel for Poof? For one thing, it feels like they just got more united. They were really drifting apart there. This is the one thing they have left in common, to some extent. This is just me reading into it. I don't actually think this is what Poof is going through. But given the style and obsessive nature of his love, and how ultimately it's self-serving, how it's threatened and jealous, I think in real life, though, what does this mean in real life? I don't know. There's some relief at this, at the thought of the king's demise. It's freedom. Because if you're infatuated with someone like that, and you're a victim to their moods and their whims, and your entire sense of health and happiness an identity is at stake with everything they say, and they consistently say things or do things that cut against that, they're a threat to you. They're a source of pain, and naturally, at least deep down, you resent sources of pain. It's like how with an addiction, the substance makes you feel really good, but you hate the substance. Though there is a chance that the magnitude of the situation, having the king's life actually be at stake, sort of snaps poof back into what really matters. The fact that originally, there was some real nice, pure love there. <laughs> Oh, this is what Nav was saying. I'm disappointed in Yubi a bit for that. You cover a large area. They're not laughing anymore. Into the flames of hell. Looking for the king. This is such a cool image. Oh, he got hurt. He actually did get hurt. Just feel it. What has Netero done? Maybe it was significant that it was that hateful force. Because it seems to have fully reverted them back into this just animalistic hatred side. We were doing so well. We, were, we had made so much progress. Don't underestimate the power of humanity. He also lost a lot of mass. I feel like they're gonna go searching out for Pedo now, for Dr. Blythe. He, he got fossilized? He's, he's not dead, is he? Narrative been awfully silent recently in these outros. I guess not a lot needs to be said. Things just went really, really wrong. Things just got really bad. Everything was going reasonably well. Yuppie was on a heroic path. The king, you know, he wasn't great. But he was he was getting better. Now the war seems to have just started all over again with an enraged Poof and Yuppie. And they're probably gonna run full steam into Gon and Pito is my guess. Which, I mean, I don't care how angry Gon is. He's not surviving that. If that's what happens, Pom and the others can see it. Maybe rushing to his aid. This whole episode just has me very unsettled. I mean, from people still wrapping themselves around Gon and his plans, the way Gon continues to look at Kamuki with pure malice, the way she's just a tool in his revenge. I don't know really how I feel about the other people in his group and how they're treating him. Is it smart that they're just stepping back? Does the fact that they're stepping back and not getting involved make them clean or does it make them complicit? It's really tough to judge because of the stakes. You know, let's not forget that the king and the ants are a threat to humanity. Yet, I don't like that we are kind of forming our actions around someone who, right now at least, is arguably just as bad or worse than the king. At least in terms of the overall traits they're showing as people, their motivations, not 
necessarily the risk of their individual desires and plans because in that category the king is definitely worse i think kalua is sort of believing what he wants to believe which may be true but i don't think there's definitive evidence there to support what he's saying. Then you have this ambiguity of whether or not Netero's actions were helpful. He leaned into the dark side for the power to defeat the king, and the king is now neutralized, it seems, for the time being. That's a win, right? But we also lost Netero. They can heal the king, and they're more united in a rally than ever. They were drifting apart. The three royal guards now are probably going to be a unit again. It's chaotic. In previous episodes, I felt some warmth. I felt a bit of relief spiritually from some of the awakenings the characters were going through, and how, you know, there's this huge animal mess and conflict from which some really great, beautiful things were emerging that now seems to just have gone out the window. Somebody needs to take the reins. Someone needs to like, get a grip on the situation and we need to know what we're fighting for. What's at stake? Everything's just gone terribly wrong. It's evolved into this immediate circle of violence. I'm not really sure where the light will come from.